One thing I learned, the people in Paso do not like Napa Valley. Holy crap. They, they were like, like to sell them grapes though. Yeah, but they they made comments like this is where wine is made in Napa is where you get auto parts. Ooh. gorgeous place it, yeah. I and Laura even said I, I thought we were in Italy because it's so well so beautiful. that's the one thing I was gonna say for over 20 years you've been coming for 25 to 30 years out to Sonoma to race and we've been here a lot to Sonoma and Napa Valley but we've never been to Paso and as soon as we got there we were like this is awesome holy crap I mean it's beautiful it was really beautiful and it is beautiful. it's got RV parks, which is one thing Napa and Sonoma do not have, especially for big rigs. Well, it was seven hours. We stopped twice briefly from Las Vegas to Paso Robles. We're at, we're, we are at, we are at the Cava Robles Resort and this is going to be our spot right here, 160, right behind me. Is unhooking the tow vehicle so we can get parked, but looks like we're gonna have some nice views. Nice picnic table. I don't think we're gonna need the fire pit. <laughs> it's pretty hot. Pretty excited to get on our bikes and check this resort out though. And there's a beautiful dog park I've got my eye on already, which Clyde will be happy because it has grass. Alright, home for the next four days. So this is interesting. I don't know what the purpose of this pole is right here, but we're gonna have to pull up and move over just a little bit more because we can't get our bays open. Much better. First stop, either one. <laughs> It's so hot, and this pole is still pissing me off. We're still hitting it a little bit. I need a nap. Okay, here we go. Does it look even? Does it look even? I'm still hungover from Vegas. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Now, I want to own an RV park in Napa. I know, I know. That, that has totally got us wanting to find. But everybody said that the... The, um, he's feeding the dog while he does recap because you know, we're multitasking here. We're actually getting ready to go for a tasting. We're just cramming this in really quick, but, but no. So Cava Robles is the RV park that we went to in Paso and it was really cool. And you're going to see in this a video, great RV park. a lot of little features that I thought were special about it. I gotta be honest. There's really not a lot of bad parking spots, but Tom and Laura right here are in spot 159. Mike and I are on the end in spot 160. They're nice, deep, wide, very well landscaped, manicured lots. And look how much room we got. Nice picnic tables on every lot, concrete pads and a little fire pit, which believe it or not, even though it's like 90 some degrees at night, it does get pretty chilly here. Then, You've got these cool little, I think they call them their chateaus, where you can rent. Which is right across the street here. I'm hoping I can get you guys a tour of one of these. So if you don't have an RV, or you have a smaller type camper, you can rent one of these and still enjoy the park. Here's a little view for you guys. Very impressed. Um, the only faux pas I think they had is that it would have been nicer to have the lap, the fitness pool be more of an adult pool. Yes. Just because their their big pool for kids and adults was amazing. We but were there on Fourth of July weekend, so I can understand there was a lot of there was a lot of kids yeah. there, and I think all these parks need to be kid friendly. Oh gosh, yeah. But they need to have a, an adult side, where if somebody's having a cocktail or they say a curse word or whatever. You don't have to be so on guard. This is the pool that I was referring. 
I sound like an old woman right now, a crabby old woman, but it sure would be relaxing if it could be the adult-only pool. Did I say that out loud? I am becoming an old woman. It's really nice. Of course, the construction in the background is not exactly relaxing on July 4th weekend, but hey, people gotta work, right? So. There goes my relaxing afternoon before wine tasting this evening. <laughs> but it really is beautiful here. I just wish that maybe they had an adult only rule. It's supposed to be a lap pool. It's impossible to swim laps when there's cannonballs going on. <laughs> Of course, you know, our kids have four legs now. My, my kids are grown with grandkids, but... Yeah, but, well, that was, the, like I said, that's the only thing that I had to say. So one of the things that I really, really love about Cabo Robles is all of their, I mean, their front entrance area, their clubhouse, their wellness center, all have these really great porches with wine barrel rocking chairs, there's fire pits, cool barrels, <laughs> tables. So if you just wanna get out in the sun, get in the shade and relax, you can. Didn't know this, there's actually a bar. I'll be back. Ooh, I should have brought some cash. Pretty cool. Just really cool amenities at the main clubhouse here. All kinds of areas for people to enjoy. Bring food, relax. Again, you can enjoy the bar, bring your drinks out here. Pretty cool. I also just saw a billiards room, so we know where Skinner's coming tonight. Also called it the concrete jungle. I didn't think it was a concrete jungle. I no. thought it was clean and beautiful and great amenities. So thumbs up to thumbs up on Paso Paso. Cava. Okay, now I wrote down my notes. I'm sitting here looking. Okay, resort gets an A minus only because I just wanted a little quieter pool area to relax in wine country. That's go. it. Location's great. Uh, it was a really plus yeah. It was close to everything. And then we did eat in a couple restaurants. So we ate at BL Brasserie, which- Awesome. Oh my gosh, it's a French style restaurant and it was insanely amazing. Super good, good wine, of mm -hmm. course. Well, no, we took the bottle of Tobin James. I know we did, but, but they, we they also ordered some feet. wine yeah. while we were there. And it was really It was good. amazing. The food was off the hook. Everything was really, really and good. And then you there. and I went to a little pedicure place right downtown and right next door was Unagi Sushi. That and was pretty good. That was really good, I thought, for sushi. I enjoyed it. You can sit outside. It was easy to get service. Now, that wasn't on the weekend. That was in the week, but it was... That was another good thing. The other neat little town area to walk around. The other days we actually cooked out because Cabo Robles was such she a nice park. This dress I did. I had to throw a temper tantrum to get it, but I did buy my dress there. Let me stand up and show you my. She always wins. Look at my pretty dress. Da, da, da. It is very pretty. Thank you. Perfect for wine tasting. Glad okay. You oh, pickleball. Centennial Park. Those people were so much fun mm -hmm. and so friendly. So if you're looking for pickleball, Centennial Park had some really fun players. We got there every day about 8.30. It stayed till like 12 or 12.30. And it was easy to get to, again, from Cabo Robles. It's right near downtown Paso. So yep. that was really, really cool. Now, the big thing, oh, like I said, we cooked out uh, for July 4th, even though it was freezing cold. Obviously, none of us were Boy Scouts. <laughs> Oh, I did all this. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little windy here. Are we sure it's July 4th? <laughs> We're all buckled up. Cooking out. Got a fire. It was so 
was cold that night. We had our fire pit going. Can you believe it was cold in what Paso? Is it? Uh -oh. it had been a hundred degrees every day before we got there. It's in it's July. Yes. Yeah. It was cold. It's it, so when you guys come I've out. I've been having here, so much fun. I forgot. What I know. Month well, it, it gets was. hot during the day, but at night it gets pretty chilly. So make sure you always have your sweatshirts and your. In my case, blankets and, and Dobermans was, that get wind, on my lap. The wind blows in the afternoon, which is kind of weird. Yeah, it but, was windy there. But, you know. Okay, let's talk about the wineries. Yeah. That was our favorite thing. Okay, so we went there to wine taste, obviously, and check out the property. My number one, do we agree? Do you see that? My favorite place was Tobin James. Because of the people. The because of the people. Yeah. Run video for our taste. Super, super really smooth wine. So the guys, they went from 12 to 31. And they got all these soldiers now. All the soldiers were in the Like the Sanford say? Hold on, I'm coming. I'm coming. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, honey. <laughs> Elizabeth. This, so this one, Osabuco. Oh. My favorite to order fifth of this month. So we need to mean. document it like every yeah. four or five days. Yeah. This is the, uh, I mean, he's like, uh, what's his name? Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. He's yeah. got a Sam, Sam Elliott. I mean, so these Tom, are our Dallas Tom, Langley Tom, starter critique, kids. Critique Skinner is for that too right now. No, wait, we can no, critiquing. You said he You're, said it needs to go like a little. Yeah, we're we're not doing it. Yeah, it needs improvement. The camp this way. Okay, come here. One, two, and three, and that's very cool. The tits are Lance, on. Wine was good. Lance is an amazing winemaker. Great guy. Well, he's the uh, owner. I don't know if he owner. makes all the wine. He has a winemaker, but and I, let me tell you. It was first class. Chris was the a retired wine, the uh, wine is good. sheriff's department yep. guy. And he retired from Monterey area, and he has been a wine club member there for like all these years and yep. said when he retired, he wanted to work in the tasting room, and Lance thought he was and joking. And that's what he's doing. And he is great. So if you can go in there and ask for Chris, he did a great job with yep. our tasting. But for me, being in that cool like western he's style He's a real tall saloon, guy with a lot of hair. No, <laughs> you're such an ass. <laughs> no, he's not, but he's really cool. Um... Oh, and they had a bar in there that was from like that Jesse James. Jesse used James to go used to. to drink at that bar back east. Yeah. And they purchased it and they they hauled it Shipped out there it and re you know put it back together. It's just a cool place. It's a really really neat place to go wine tasting. And if really you is. like any type of wine, they'll have something. Yep, they to make a lot taste. of different wines. Lot yeah, of different whatever your palate is, I'm sure there's going to be a bottle there that you really really like. So yep, we walked out of there a couple cases. Oh, and they had really cool clothes. Yeah. We got those really cool t shirts, like the Tommy Bahama with Tommy Bahama wine that, and stuff. And a wine, I've never seen in, yeah. them let, put anybody else's name on their stuff. But anyway. Number 10, Tobin James. Thank you, Lance. That was very special. Then we went to Jada, and uh, just Tom and you and I went there for like a little 11 a.m. tasting the second day, and we enjoyed that. We had Eric, which uh, he was so educational. I mean, I probably learned more at Jada than any place else. Cabernet. Yeah. And then you should have a nice, healthy portion of Merlot and Malbec on the back end of this guy. All four. Yes, sir. Mm. And uh, it has got a nice emphasis on the Petit Verdot varietal, which for us is a wonderful, uh, beautiful illustration of how we can make big, bold Bordeaux in California. Uh, we like to complement it with a little bit of Cabernet. Bordeaux can be a little bit drier than your Rhones, with a little bit more uh, depth to them. And Petit Verdot specifically is more of an earthy varietal, a little bit of kind of a black tea, kind of a smoky nuance to it. Uh, that's why we like to use a little bit of Cabernet in our Petit Verdot blend. It kind of gives a little bit more of that ripe fruit, pomegranate, bing cherry, even a little bit to us of the coffee on the finish. And so. once again, we're seeing a little bit of Malbec. A little bit, yeah. Just kind of a little bit of that cherry note. It's always nice to have a cherry uh, kind of vibe in your wine. And uh, the Merlot is a great softening to it. So that's kind of what it's placed in this wine. It's for kind of stretches out the finish and just absorbs some of the bigger tannins and a little bit more acidity that Cab and Petit Verdot are known. I just missed the best footage ever because I was getting ready to film and I was like doing this little fluffy and Tom started laughing at me and then we were like, oh, people do that for you in the movies. She always chops my head off and she had Tom cut out for a few minutes, but <laughs> focus Angie, focus. Focus on the ball. That's I, what your caddy tells you. Focus on the ball. I refuse to get a selfie stick, so my arm gets tired, and that's when I start cutting your heads off. <laughs> so right, it right. going. It's cut, man. Yeah, I nice. know. See, I'm getting that nice little cut. So anyways, um, 
I hate that I missed it because Tom was giving us a play-by-play -play of you don't mind makeup, but you don't I, I don't mind them coming up doing makeup, but I, I, I don't I don't like hair for some reason. It's just a, it, probably because my mom would do that and I hated it as a kid. <laughs> now <laughs> Laura does And I said now Laura <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So we are at Tom, Tom King. <laughs> Tom King. Tom King. When it, yeah, when Laura does it. Yeah, she gets her hands and it sticks straight up in the air and I look like Don King. <laughs> you will never look like Don King. No. <laughs> Sorry. So we are at Jada Vineyards here in Paso Robles. Eric is taking good care of us for this tasting. So far, we've got a couple more to taste, but um, I like the beignet I do too. for the white and the uh, passing by, which is their cab. I That's, like that. that. I like was, the passing by. Yeah. But I also like the rosé as well. Yes. I like the rosé. It's very dry. We've got our little yeah. notes here. Yeah. You can and see notes, we're so. making our little notes. We're buying wine. <laughs> we'll give you a recap. I don't know if you can see this beautiful view from my phone at this angle, but we have a fantastic view. A wonderful table here. So. And right down there is the Chardonnay, which gets more shade, right? Yes, you gotta, correct. You have to look down there over the, the rocks. Yes. Just down below the rocks. And then over the other side was... Uh, Malbec? They, you got, you, I think he said. I think there's some Malbec in what's kind some of a better spot over there. It's yeah. about four years before they can right. start doing anything yeah. with that. Second day of wine tasting. We're doing good. We've got cheese. <laughs> in order to drink a lot of wine, you have to buy wine. And these folks are nice enough to let us try all their wines so yeah. we can pick out which wines we want to buy. Yes. So we but we were just discussing that. Happy Fourth of July. We're buying, oh, yeah, we are buying, time, so. yes, we're buying wines and then we take them back to the bus and over the next month we're going to drink them and then we're going to go, we were either drunk <laughs> when yeah. we thought we liked this or damn, feeling, order more of that. Feeling very patriotic. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, look, I've got my red, white, blue. Will you boys too? Look how cute. Oh, oh yeah. We did get a history lesson. Blue. Tom was giving us the history lesson of um, Adams and Jefferson today, which was very good. Yeah, in 1846, it was the 50th anniversary of the United States, and Thomas Jefferson and John Adams had spent years writing each other back and forth. They didn't see each other because it was too hard to travel and they were getting older and it was just too difficult. But they kept writing each other and they all kept copies of their letters and today those are considered the great American letters. Now, on the 4th of July of 1846, they both died. I never knew that. Yes. Me neither. On the 50th anniversary of the country they helped form. That's pretty crazy. They both died. The letters are incredible because they talk oh, about, cool. wow, how did we do this? How did we pull this off? We could have been hung by the by the crown of the British, and I, I just I, we can't. They couldn't even still believe they'd pulled it off. And also, it had transitions, you know, to each president that were non-military. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, when Thomas Jefferson actually died in the morning, I think he was about 88. And John Adams died in the afternoon, later in the day, and he was 90, I think, or 91. And when and when John Adams died up in Massachusetts, he's, his last words were, Jefferson lives. But Jefferson had died that morning down in Virginia. <clears throat> See, yeah. I'm telling you, we've got our historian with us, so more to come. But what a coincidence. Happy Fourth. I mean, we just keep on learning. Something kind of almost godlike in, in that. That was, yeah. yes. They went to heaven at the same, same time. time. It's amazing. Yeah. Cool. Obviously, uh, Eric was successful in Jared. his sales. Jared. 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 Yeah. Oh, Jarek. Yeah, we have a new name Jackson. now. Yeah. Jarek, so we can be yeah, part of the family the with the chains. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. We very, we enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Well, thank you guys for coming in. I appreciate <laughs> it. And I gotta say this: their wines are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Their wines were were it really was really very good. Classy tasting. I, I thought they were the the as far as the quality of the wine. I thought it was as good as Tobin James. Mm -hmm. um, it was great. It's a lot smaller deal. It's up on the hill. He had talked a lot about the the coast and a lot of this. Cool. It was very educational was and a lot of fun. Then later on that day, we met with Laura and we went to Dow, and that probably wins was the prettiest the, property the best property the best view it's yeah. like you are in this resort in italy really nice tables the food there um was it mariano laura was it mariano that was the manager at dow marino marino, marino. marino. he also well, he's actually a chef on hell's kitchen and stuff so it's kind of cool that we got to meet him and the food was really good there 
This is breathtaking. I did not expect this. I had read that Dow was a great vineyard to visit for the wines and that they did have the best view in Paso, but are you kidding me? Look at this. I mean, are you kidding? So Dow is Lebanese. It means light. I, I just did not expect something this pretty. I feel like I am in Italy. This is why we always say our being is so amazing because you can just see parts of the country that we just don't know exist. And I already know I want to come back to Paso Robles and stay a week or longer. And I would like to just sit in those two chairs one entire day and sip wine. Oh, we're videoing. Why are you videoing? I don't know. I was trying He's struggling to, today. I was trying to take a picture. And stop that. Yeah, but it's a little over two years now. Were you old enough to drink them? Yeah. Uh, I was 35 might, at the time. Might have been a requirement. <laughs> so don't mind us. We just we just come through the bushes. <laughs> Look at this. Beautiful rosé. Do they want certain mm. food? My favorite wine. I'm just gonna be honest. Not my favorite wine in Paso area. But the wine was good, but it wasn't as good as the other wines that we. Had but they had a Pinot that we really loved, and the rosé was we really bought, good. We bought yeah. wine from them. Yeah, and, they're bigger. And, uh, they're bigger cabs and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, whatever. But um, the food. It was a little fancier. You yeah. Know? But if you want to go and have a romantic or just a relaxing lunch, I the here's views, what I would do. Oh my gosh. I, I probably would go there. Try to get a really cool table overlooking their their beautiful valley. Order lunch, get a couple bottles of wine, and just spend all afternoon there because it was. And you could have dogs. All these places you could have dogs. They're all dog friendly. Yes, which was really cool. Yep. Um, okay, then the last then day we, we went forward. to our fav one of our favorite Ooh, wineries that we've always wanted. Baby, to see, Justin. Now that wine was the best wine that we've had on the trip so far. Yeah. All right, guys, thumbs up, Justin, back. one of Mike and I's favorites. Did you like the experience at Justin? Yeah, love it. Very good, very we're, good. We're wound up we're very, and, and... We're very focused on the uh, magpie right now. Tom looks very Hollywood today. <laughs> and very wind up and wound down. Because he wore the shirt. Wind up and wound down. Wind me up. Because he finally wore the shirt Laura picked out. Oh. oh. I wore the shirt Angie picked out. Michael, go get Pretty the much every day. Look, I'm going to bring you No, no, it's not. When you do that, it, it doesn't matter. It don't work. You come a little closer. No, because he's already been fit. You have to talk him in. It's a process. Mike, we're, it takes we're, patience. We were trying to get the animal whisper. Yeah. He is now the bird whisper. Meanwhile, me and Kiki here are going to go tour the vineyard. good food here at Justin Winery. The isosceles is still one of my favorites. Look how beautiful the flowers are here. The lavender. I'm telling ya, Napa, look out. Also, it's becoming a favorite for the Skinners. It's amazing how much mm -hmm. flavor there is. Just Isn't that good? Gone. gone. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Justin Vineyards not only feeds us or gives us wine, they also provide us with fresh. <laughs> what were those? Some plum. kind of plum Plums. and fresh asparagus. There you go. Mm. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. And uh, we we'll give you that recap. We'll give you that recap next week. He knew his wine at Justin, our host there. He was amazing. I think he's also the manager. The um, theme this week is Tom going. Uh, we're gonna drink more wine today. Where are we going? <laughs> we when, got when, another tasting. When does this stop? <laughs> and I say, Tom, when in Rome, do as Romans do. I mean, I mean, you know, when I'm he, only two a day max. Yeah, we, yes, we have not. We tried to do four years ago one oh, time. Oh, no, never again. No, you're don't drunk, do that. You're drunker than shit, and you have a hangover by dinner time. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good idea. Not a good idea. But so 
that's our recap of Paso Robles. I want to go back. Cheers. The other thing about Paso is it's very close to the coast. So if you want to go to the coast and see the ocean crashing and some really cool sites, Hearst Castle, was, there were so many things to do. We just didn't have time to do it. We would talk a little longer, but we have to go taste wine. We got to go. Yeah, we're late. See ya. We got to go taste. <laughs> Thank you.